What's up mountain bikers, Rue here, and today we're gonna to be doing a product spotlight on the Cascade Components Chain Guide and Bash Guide. Pretty excited about this. I've been wanting to get it ever since it was released. Um, we're going to be pulling off my old one of Components Bash Guide, doing a little bit of a comparison, and then also explaining some concepts of why Cascade Components made this and what problems they tried to solve. So Cascade Components kind of jumped on the scene originally, making these aftermarket links for select mountain bikes. They have expanded their range as far as what bikes can adapt them. Uh, what they do is uh, sometimes they give you a little bit more travel, they give you a little bit more shock options that you can use with your bikes, uh, and they also can change the progressiveness of your bike, maybe giving you a little bit more if your bike is inherently weak with maybe its uh, progressiveness in the suspension curve. But nonetheless, They've made really cool products. I've been happy with my link on my Enduro. Uh, but today we're gonna to be taking a look at the guide. Again, really excited about this product. Uh, so let's take a look at it. Let's pull off my one of components ring, uh, bash guide, and let's do some comparisons. All right, so we have the Cascade Components chain guide here. Now, if you didn't already know, and you don't have a link made from Cascade Components, they are completely uh, CNC milled um, and they're really beautiful products. Uh, that passes along uh, just fine is here well. You can see that this has got some mill outs. You can actually see some of the uh, mill marks from uh, the machine. Um, so you've got a lot of this notched out for weight and actually the one of components bash guide is actually pretty light. It comes in at about I think 110-ish grams. Uh, this is going to be in actually the low 90s. So it has less moving parts uh, so there are some reasons for that. But it's IECG uh, 05 uh, mounting so you've got your three mounting holes right here. Now one thing that could be a turn off on these guides is these are chain ring uh, size specific. So if you have a 30 or a 32 tooth, you have to make sure that you are selecting the correct one um, or you have to buy a different bottom plate um, to if you want to uh, go up um, in the future. So but as it stands right now, once you buy, you select a 30 or a 32 tooth, um, and that's what you're stuck with unless you buy the six year piece. Whereas if you buy like a one ups component kit, you get all of the pieces together. Um, and this is actually a very affordable package um, with a lot of different options built in. Um, but there are some things about the Cascade uh, guide that I want to address and reason why I want to try. So a typical uh, guide bash combo, uh, you're basically only going to have your upper guide retention. So as you can see, chain's going to slot through uh, this little channel um, and then it's going to sit probably about two thirds of the way on to this little guide ceiling. Um, and so this basically hovers over the chain, chain passes through and that's what gives you the retention. Um, you have to adjust these height ways, uh, you can see right here, and that is how it achieves its retention. Uh, nothing down here. This is purely just for uh, your bash guide to just bash off of uh, objects if you're going over uh, big rocks or big logs. Um, that is all uh, this bottom plate does. Now, moving on to the cascade components, uh, chain guide bash combo. Uh, a couple interesting things. So this guide up here isn't a guide per se. It's actually just kind of more of a kind of stopping block. This is completely solid. Um, there's a little milling out here for uh, for some weight savings, but this is all this is all solid. So the chain actually doesn't pass through here. This guide was actually designed for the chain basically to pass right underneath and not allow the chain to 
bounce up off the chain ring and that's where you get your uh, chains basically hopping off the chain ring and that's how you lose your chain. And then on the bottom, you have this really thick guide, uh, comparatively, um, a lot more thick um, than the one up version. Uh, but you also get the same deal here. So you can see it's got this little uh, flow right here. So same thing. Your chain is meant to basically hover right on top of this so that it can't uh, glance off from the bottom. As you know, when you're going over rough terrain, your chain is flopping around everywhere. You don't notice it. Sometimes you'll hear it. But if you were to watch a slow-mo or video, your chain is just flopping up and down. So this is actually meant to uh, prevent the chain from hopping off the bottom. So you've got uh, top and bottom retention by way of basically eliminating uh, the chain hopping off. Other cool little details, you got some more milling out here for some weight savings and you can kind of see some of these mill marks right here as well. Cool little details, this is a really uh, beautiful ring. And if you actually go to Cascade Components website, uh, you can actually see some of their videos that they have of this in action and how it uh, re prevents your change from hopping off. I will put that link down in the description of the video. All right, so I have it installed on the bike. Um, pretty easy setup. Uh, since there are no uh, rails as far as how you clock the chain rings like most do, uh, it's basically just the three ISCG bolts. It's fixed in, this doesn't move. Uh, a couple things that I noticed is I did have to use uh, the spacers that I use on my one-up guide on the back. Uh, that way it just pushes the plate out a little bit. Otherwise, uh, the bash plate was gonna be kind of more riding the front outside edge of this. Uh, but that's it, that's how it goes on. Um, it is meant to be completely rub free. I did notice on the bottom tolerances are really tight. So I do imagine that the chain is going to bounce off on that kind of bottom lip a little bit, but that's what it's designed to do. That is for maximum chain safety. Again, you have top and you have bottom retention to help keep the chain from bouncing off. And it kind of, as you can see, just with this, I mean, most of the tight tolerances are going to be on this front upper half. You may have like maybe a millimeter and a half to two millimeters, but then it kind of flares up and ramps so that when you get into your big uh, 50 to 52 uh, granny gear, um, that you shouldn't be experiencing any rub um, there as well. So again, it's a chain guide. Some people love them. Some people don't care to have them, but I like to have them. I've dropped chains before and it's ruined race runs and it's just small weight penalty for so much more security. So that's it. If you have any questions about this, I'll put a product link uh, for them in the uh, description of the video so you can check it out. If you have any questions more about the construction, um, how it fits, um, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them the best that I can. So we'll see you guys next time.